Hello, in this tutorial we are going to be covering creating and setting up a SFML project on your Mac. If you want to set it up on Windows, feel free, there will be a separate video for that. So if you're still here, I'm assuming that you want to set it up for Mac, fantastic. Okay, a prerequisite, make sure you have Xcode installed. It's a free download from the Mac App Store, once you've done that, fantastic. Next, you want to go to your web browser, go to sfml-dev.org and there will be a link available to this with this video so you don't have to remember it. Go to download, go to the latest stable version, for me it's 2.4.2 at the moment but it might be a newer one, that's fine, the tutorial will still apply. Go to Mac OS X, click download and this shouldn't take very long at all, it's a very small file, under 5.5 megabytes. So, do, 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 almost done. And once it's done, we'll extract it and start the setup process. So, just click it to open it. And now this has extracted it. And we'll rename it as SFML. It'll just be easy to work with when we start linking it to our project. What we want to do now is create a new folder. I'm going to create it on my desktop. But this is your project folder, which will also contain your SFML library. Feel free to put it anywhere you want. So I'm going to say new folder and I'm going to just say SFML. I'm just going to call it SFML like so. And now in here, I'm going to create a new folder called external libraries. And now what we're going to do is move this SFML folder into the external libraries. And what we will be doing is creating a SFML, I mean a Xcode project here, linking it to the external libraries at the moment, it's just SFML. We can easily extend it and other add other external libraries such as Box2D, which is a fantastic physics engine. And what this will allow us to do is, because it will be linked, we can just move this folder and we can move it even to a different computer and it will just work because we are taking the library files with us. Next step is to open up Xcode, click create a new project, select command line tool, click next. For the product name, I'm going to call it SFML template and just make sure the language is set to C++. The other properties, you feel free to do whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever you need I guess. Click next and for desktop, go to wherever you created your folder, place it here, click create. Before we actually start coding anything, what you want to do is actually link up the folder from the external library folder, the SFML folder that is, and link up the library file. So go to your project here, go to build settings, and make sure you've got all selected, and in the search bar type in search. Now go to header search files, double click it, click plus, and now what you want to do is, I'll zoom in so it's easy to see, is type in quotation marks. Inside the quotation marks, put dollar, curly braces, and put src root. And the src root refers to the actual project folder. And this will refer to, if I go over here, this actually refers to this. And we want to link it to the external libraries. So what we need to do is do forward slash dot 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 forward slash so this goes back a directory type in external libraries forward slash sfml and then forward slash include so this is linking to the sfml include folder which is all of our code so this will allow us to use the sfml code and we need to do the same so, so if we copy this we need to do the same for the library file. So if we go to lib, we need to do the exact same for this. So copy and paste this, it'll save you a whole heap of time. Go to library search paths, click plus, paste it here. Just change include to lib, click enter, and that is it. And as you can see, it's picked up the directory, but if I double click on it, it's still got the source root. This is fantastic because we can just move it in a different location on our computer or to another computer 
that is and it'll just work because it's relatively linked now go to build phases link binary of libraries click plus click add other go to your external libraries folder select sfml and in here go to lib what you want to do is select all of the five libraries you don't want to select the ones with the arrows because they're just aliases aka shortcuts you want to select the ones without it so select the audio graphics network system and window open that so once you've done all of that let's just build our project build is successful fantastic now go to your main.cpp we can actually start coding our application so what i'm going to do is just code up a really really basic sfml application that just displays a window so if i get rid of all of these contents for hash include if i put angle brackets sfml you can actually use the sfml code so graphics.hpp will allow us to use the graphic core elements of sfml and this is what you'll be using for the majority of your code will be from the graphics file then hash include io stream and we'll just be using the io stream for some basic c outs or that's if you want to do some c outs and we're going to do hash define for the screen underscore width and I'm going to put 1024 so I'm sure you can guess what this refers to it's the width of our window and this is going to be screen height I'll leave it at 1024 so it's going to be a square now int main which is the entry point of our application and now what we're going to do is create something called a render window which is essentially like this the window that will be displayed and all the content will appear so you do ff colon colon render window and we just do window like so and just put ff colon colon video mode video mode and this merely takes in the size of our window so you put screen width screen height and the final parameter that we pass in is the title of the window aka what appears over here at the top so I'm just going to put awesome game like so. Now what we need to do is open up our window. To do that you do while window dot is open. So while it's open you'll be running this loop and this is called the game loop and this is where the majority of the application will be. So you put sf colon colon event event so we are detecting if any event has occurred the default event that you need to check for on mac is the closed event and then after that you can check for more events such as keyboard joystick resized events and all of that really cool stuff so what we're going to do to check for the event you poll it so you just do while window dot poll event passing the event that has been created I'm just going to go down, put some extra lines so it's just easier to work with. And what we want to do is in here put a switch case statement, put event dot type. So we are switching on the type of event because there's various types of events, so like keyboard, mouse, joystick. The only one we are concerned with is SF event closed so this is when the window has been closed automatically the window won't close so what you have to do is window.close and we'll just put a break here so that's it for checking for events outside of the poll event we will just do window.clear so you know, window.clear so this will clear the contents off the screen now we would just draw the sfml objects then window dot display finally outside of the while loop just put return exit underscore success and that's it really so what you do is first of all you handle any input slash events 
after that you would update game logic then after that you would draw the contents to the screen so an event could be the left key being pressed the updating of the game logic could be moving your main character left by x amount of pixels and then you would clear the screen draw the objects in their new position and then display them to the screen for the user to see so if i click run now all successful fantastic and we get an empty window that appears that is awesome over the next few videos we'll be implementing code to actually create a game so like i said if you're interested in setting it up for windows feel free to check out our other video and if you have any questions feel free to post them on my educational platform sonarlearning.co.uk if you want to check out the source code from any part in this series or you want to get this project already set up feel free to check out the github page and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day